Hey, Ann Thompson, we are at the holidays. The Oscar voters are watching their videos. The experts have sounded off, and we think we know what's going on, but uh, you're not following the consensus in two races. And let's start with the big jaw dropper, best picture. Everybody says La La Land, but Ann Thompson says, Manchester by the sea. <laughs> Why? <laughs> because I'm talking to ask actual Oscar voters. Oh, okay. There's a difference between what all the critics are saying. There's a different, you know, just because you're winning critics groups or people are writing about this and loving the movie. Lots of people love La La Land. I love La La Land. It is a very entertaining, really uh, innovative, really fun movie. But from the beginning, I thought, the older Academy voters know their musicals. They know the rules. They know what Chazelle is doing disruptively with this movie. Whoa. They get it. And this is, this is not necessarily a soft blob down the middle for all the crafts, for the sound, for it didn't make it to hair and makeup, which surprised me. You know, it's, yeah. it's a question of, uh, you know, Emma Stone didn't win Critics' Choice. It isn't totally in the bag. It didn't get SAG Ensemble. That's I a know, big deal. Amazing. No film since Braveheart, of course, has won Best Picture without it. But, Anne, one year ago, you said to me when I asked you, Anne, what are you hearing in the rooms? What, you know, from the actual Oscar voters, you said, I'm telling you, I'm hearing spotlight, spotlight, spotlight. And of course, you turned out to be 100% right. But... You and I and many others let ourselves be convinced by the revenant bandwagon in the home stretch. And then at the last second, I went, whoop, and I jumped off and got back to Spotlight. Why did, when you were hearing Spotlight at this point last year, why didn't you stick with it? It's a good question. Um, that is a very, very good question. I think that sometimes you can overthink it. And revenant probably had more late inning. Uh, momentum it was yeah. a later release and it was uh it had a lot of bells and whistles and it did very well by the way in a ritu you know whatever but in the end uh spotlight was the one that that won i i suspect it was a very close race oh it had to be absolutely had to be um but now picture of uh, let's go through your list of uh nominees let me pull this up what movies do you think can win well, here's the thing. We have, we're, we're at this particular juncture in time where there's several different things going on. We've seen the critics groups. We've seen the Globe nominations. We've seen the SAG nominations. We haven't seen the guilds yet. We don't know the PGA. We don't know the DGA. We don't know the WGA. That's going to tell the real story in a race where we have three movies at the top, Manchester, Moonlight, and La La Land. We have Fences about to open on 2,200 screens, and I am betting it's going to do really well and get all sorts of buzz now that it will get from being in theaters and being a hit. You know, that's going to help Fences. I've always thought Fences would do very well. Mm -hmm. but Viola Davis and Denzel Washington are hugely popular. The actors love them. It did get a SAG Ensemble nomination. The other movie that's doing very well that's going to continue to be strong is Arrival. Arrival is strong. Amy Adams is strong. People like Arrival. The movie that's coming up from the back is Hell or High Water. That is a very well-reviewed movie that people like in the Academy. It could get the steak eater vote, you know? Mm -hmm. Now, the big question marks for me, the, the, the ones that I don't know the answers to, are these movies that haven't been reviewed that well but play well and that have some scale and scope. That's why I went with Revenant, too, because it had that scale and scope. Hacksaw Ridge, what's going to happen to that? What's going to happen to Lion? What's going to happen to Hidden Figures? These are, these are the big question marks. And Jackie is a question mark. Yeah, you don't have Jackie and you don't have Silence for Best Picture. Jackie's my number two favorite film of the year. So I, take I love Jackie. Right I am a huge fan of Jackie, but I've been saying from the beginning that it plays better to the artier, more uh, sophisticated uh, Academy members than it does for the mainstream Academy members, and that has turned out to be true. And Jackie but didn't get a hair and makeup. That looked like a front runner to me, and it I didn't know, get hair and makeup. Right. Yes, I know. Uh, but it could get in for Best Picture, right? If there are enough passionate people who love it, it could. And that's true of Silence as well. I believe that Silence is going to get cinematography. And if, if I have my way, 
uh, which I won't, but I think Issey Ogata should have a supporting yeah. actor nomination. Know, you've, got, you've got all the silent snubbing going on in your predictions all over the place, but, he, but you've got him in there. It's, it's, uh, it's cute. So let's talk about your other, num your other big surprise among predictions here, and it's Annette Bening to win Best Actress. Now, I said that very early on. It is a very competitive race. I believe that she is, is absolutely in there for a nomination. Yeah. As far as who's going to win, I do not know at this stage. So, I don't but, think there's any front runner right now. Uh, I would agree with you. Uh, I think there are two front runners. I think the strongest cases are made for both Natalie and for Emma, but you could see, uh, you know, an upstart coming through the uh, the ranks. But this here. is one of the reasons I'm saying um, that Annette Benning is because. 20th century women offers her a role that is so rich and so fabulous. It is not the, um, it's, it's like Aurora Greenaway in terms of endearment. It is an utterly unique uh, women's role. You've, it, it's such a rich, rich tapestry for her and she really runs with it. And whatever you think of the movie, and I love the movie, but other people like it less, I think she gets in there with that group of voters, with the actors. I really do. But it's not a transformative performance. It's not the performance with a lot of heavy effect and imitating another person. And, she and goes on glam. She goes her That's age. True. True. She absolutely shows. I, 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 I defy you. I mean, she is angry, disappointed, loving, sad, mysterious, enigmatic, sexy. She is 50 million things at once in one role. I, 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 I can't even give you a recent performance that is so much going on. I, well, I, 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 this is a crowded category, isn't it? Because uh, in addition to all the front runners, we have uh, uh, Ruth Nega, Meryl Streep, Taraji P. Henson. These are the people that have not been getting in or at least Taraji has not been getting well, in. Well, now Meryl Streep has done well with SAG. Yes, right. And 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 the Globes, of course, because they have two categories. But um, and 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 Critics Choice has two categories. But she is in, I think, for uh, if 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 I'm reading the tea leaves right, because Fences, excuse me, because the uh, the SAG noms went with Meryl too. And that's very indicative. I was I've been thinking that maybe. Florence Foster Jenkins is the Trumbo of this year. Uh, I like the, that. The movie that did really well at SAG, and you go, oh, we're going to have to take that more seriously. And yes, Brian Cranston got through. And, you know, and then, so, so it, it's, it's something to, you know, Hugh Grant could go through as well. Isabel Hubert, am I pronouncing her name correctly? You are. She, um, it won some of the Critics Awards, New York and L.A. She got nominations from Critics' Choice and Golden Globe. She was snubbed at SAG. Uh, sometimes we have these art house darlings, and they tend to be mature women. I'm thinking of the uh, Emmanuel Reba kind of nomination. She got nominated, though. Juliette yes, Binoche yes. won. Um, mm -hmm. you got, and then you have Marion Cotillard, who won. Mm -hmm. um, the, 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 the Academy loves going highbrow with a fabulous French actress. Mm -hmm. And they and could she's do not it again. Past, yeah. They could do it again. And she's gotten lots and lots of attention. So the question that has to be answered there is how many Academy members will watch L? Yes. <sighs> and it was a foreign nominee uh, shortlist. Why is Arrival the rare sci-fi movie breaking in this year? I mean, we look at past years where um, uh, Inception got in, but Interstellar did not. I mean, they have a mixed uh, report card at the Oscars. I think Denis Villeneuve is very well respected. Sicario is very popular. Uh, Amy Adams has been nominated five times and carries this movie like the movie star that she is. And there were some naysayers at the beginning who just assumed that Amy Adams would be the one who's going to get left out. And I never did. I always believed that Amy Adams was going to be in for Arrival. And then Arrival went and did well at the box office and got great reviews. It has very good reviews and people like it. I hear love, people really love it. And so um, it, I, think it's a, it, I think it's not a standard sci-fi. A, it's on the ground. It's not in space. 
Right. That's a good it point. It is not really a sci-fi movie at all. There may be an alien communication problem, but and there's some beautiful design. I, I, I believe the production design and the. I was horrified that they disqualified the music. Um, I, I believe that this is a very beautifully wrought uh, movie. I think the uh, cinematographer Bradford Young could get in. Um, it is. It is. It's so beautifully made on every level that I think it's an Academy movie, and it's a drama. It's really a mother-daughter emotional drama too. Yes, uh, and, and surprising that it becomes that when you when you expect a different movie early on. It's almost like they sold it one way, yes. and then it turned out to be yes, something you else. Discover this other movie that you really like, and you go. Yeah. Although I have to admit, I had to have. Daniel Montgomery, our senior editor, explained the end to me. Then I went, oh. It's worth seeing it twice. <laughs> <laughs> hey, a little oh, too yeah. smart for the room arrival. Let's talk about this overdue factor. You mentioned Amy Adams. You brought up Annette Benning, And Oscar voters often love to give awards to people who haven't won in the past. I mean, is, is, is there the sentiment this year of a Julianne Moore, or we just have to give it to her, or Kate Winslet might... And to the point where it doesn't even matter anymore, like Al Pacino, what the movie is. It's just that poor, you know, Amy Adams, if she loses again, is going to be tied with Glenn Close and Deborah Carr and Thelma Adams, Thelma Adams, Thelma Ritter. With, You're funny. <laughs> as the biggest winner among actresses. Is, is, there, well, is there that sentiment this year for anybody? I look at it, I think, I, this is, I guess what I would say there is that I think Amy is one of those people that is really, really respected for how good she is. And I believe she delivers in that performance and that the actors are going to see that. That's what I've always believed. And I believe the same is true of Annette Benning. They recognize the degree of difficulty. By the way, Ruth Nega should be in there. And I'm afraid that because Loving is quiet and restrained and opened a while ago and doesn't feel like it has lots of momentum behind it, that there's, there's a lack of of urgency around loving. I hope the actors recognize those two performances, Joel Edgerton and Ruth Nega. I hope so. Yeah, they're, they're way, way, the whole movie was subtle. It was a gamble that they played when they uh, took on this courtroom uh, drama that, in which, that never goes into a courtroom. And um, uh, they took some chances there. What about Mel Gibson? Do you think there's a chance we forgive Mel this year? I'm, I'm looking for themes here, Anne. I'm going for like overdue. We talked about that right now. Not about All right. So let's talk about the Hollywood Reporter Roundtable. I love those roundtables because you can really see the dynamics in the room. You can see how the different people are talking to each other. And I think uh, Mel is, is, is an engaging fellow in person. You know, he's a likable man. And he brought those directors around in that, in that round table. He said things that they agreed with about how difficult it is to direct and what it's like to be, uh, you know, out there on the battlefield trying to get all the extras to do what they, you know. He, he had a little one-upsmanship with Oliver Stone, you know, complaining, you know, about uh, taking, you know, having to work with animals. He said, what about a jaguar, you know. So, he's, you know, it's, it's, so I, does Mel, you know, is he working the room and bringing people over? I think people respect his craftsmanship as a director. And it has been 10 years, and they may be willing to let him get out of jail. That doesn't mean he's going to get to Best Picture or Director, but I believe Andrew Garfield and some of the techs will get in. Maybe John Debney for uh, score. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Maybe sound. Maybe, uh, you know, he did a beautiful job with it. He did, especially the last half. is just rousing. It's great cinema, great war scenes. It all delivers. It's a little too violent for some people. What's there are people who won't watch it because it's so violent. But let's talk about the steak eaters. Let's talk about the, the male vote. The truth mm -hmm. of the Academy is it's still older. It's still white, whiter. It's still male. And, you know, they're going to go for, I think, Hell or High Water or Hacksaw Ridge. You know, I think that's going to happen. And there are a lot of women's movies. And you could argue that 20th Century Women uh, or, or uh, Hidden Figures is at a disadvantage if you know in terms of how it plays for for the overall academy if if they're not interested or J Jackie if they're not interested in in identifying with women right which they have a history of of course uh, they sure and do about the uh, LA Times uh, report that came out a few years ago that revealed that the academy is 
ninety percent white, seventy seven percent male. Uh, the they've been making progress, and they've been adding people. <laughs> they've been inviting everybody they that they neglected to invite before. But um, it, it's it's making. I mean, you could have some some interesting. Uh, I think this year there will be a very diverse uh, set of nominees. It yeah. won't look like Oscar's so white anymore. Mm -hmm. No, I don't think it's going to be that severe this time. I think that there'll be lots of diversity. Hey, what is all but this? No like? Every year, Anne, we get this kind of critics' darling movie uh, that they just go crazy over. What did you think of Moonlight? I was disappointed. I thought no. it, I liked it. I thought it was good, but I just thought it was just didn't go far enough for everything I wanted it to do. I thought what it achieved masterfully was creating a sense of profound empathy with the viewer. So you really felt that kid's suffering. You really felt the, 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 the misery of the lives of everyone in that movie. And those things I thought were superb, but I just wanted, I don't know, I wanted more. What did you think of it? I love the Moonlight and, and it's one of the best reviewed movies of the year. It's I think it's like 99 or something on, on Metacritic. And it's a beautiful, uh, elegantly wrought, you know, the brilliant idea of the triptych so that when you get to the end and you meet this muscle drug dealer, you know, you, f you know who he is, you know what he was like as a little boy, what he was like as a teenager, how much he was bullied, how much he went through, and what his real um, neediness is in terms of his sexuality. It's a very moving movie, and I did believe from the beginning that Mahershala Ali would win Supporting Actor, and I believe wow, that's right about that. Why? Because in this case, I miss things like the year of uh, Lupita Nyong'o. I just missed the whole things, and I just didn't get it. I walked out of Twelve Years a Slave, going, "Oh, that was great," and I had to look over my shoulder and think, "Who is this uh, Lupita they're talking about?" And I'm, I have to confess, Oscarologist to Oscarologist to you here, that I had the same thing with with Ali going on. Why? Well, did I you knew him from House of Cards. Yeah. And I knew that he was in Luke Cage, and I I believe that this is a great actor. And I I know I knew that in my own experience of the movie, that I was unbelievably um, oh, that's not going to work. That I it's getting dark, so I'm no longer getting uh, uh, light. You're very well lit. I'm harshly. No, no, no. <laughs> um, basically, um, the uh, he was incredible, and he made me cry every time I saw the photo of Mahershala Ali carrying the little boy in the water. It made me cry, and and so I just paid attention to that. It was the heart of the movie. The idea that this man, this tough drug dealer, you know, would would care enough to extend himself and reach out to this poor little boy and try to give him something better something you know try to mentor him and look out for him and be a surrogate dad to him all of us have had somebody at some point in time take care of us a little bit when we needed it and that's what that represented to me and i i believed he would win the oscar for that reason but see i didn't take into account the uh, alicia vikander effect which you mentioned there which is he's in everything now that's it's a, it's his it year it's the yeah, year he yeah. broke out and and he's also in hidden figures <laughs> he, he plays the boyfriend of taraji p henson and ordinarily i would be saying that she was a shoe in but because that best actress race is so intense i believe that it will be octavia spencer who gets in because she's getting the attention from all the critics groups and she's and i think everybody's just gonna they love her She's yeah. very popular, and she's a great actress. She's a great actress. We underestimated her at first, but uh, let, right she's now... She's been the, nominated before, right? Yes. Yeah. And uh, she she has the, the fastest upward trajectory of any Oscar candidate at Gold Derby right now. She's zooming up, 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 up. Uh, Taraji, you mentioned, yes, she was shut out at the Globe, shut, shut out at SAG. Uh, she has that, that big defiant scene that they love in the films, but I think she's hurt by Cookie in her case. Um, well, it's interesting to note that Viola Davis has become a bigger star because of television, and so has Mahersha Ali. And so it's a question of, um, I saw the screening of Fences, and everybody was just going nuts for Viola. And, and you have to know that it's from How to Get Away with Murder, you know, that, that, that that's, or How to Murder Your also, Wife, whatever that thing is called. Yeah, how do you, um, but yeah. also, so what she's, the hell? She, She's just, she was, we all thought she was going to win the Oscar a few years ago, and she had it uh, uh, snatched by Meryl Streep, 
And uh, she's just a very likable actress. I mean, Viola is just likable because you could tell she's in this thing from the trenches on. She's a dedicated actress who, who really cares about the work more than being a star. And there's something very appealing. And then she hasn't got, she's been no, multiply nominated at the Oscars, but now it's her moment, isn't it? It, it she's is not, her moment and she will win. Yeah. She will win Best Supporting Actress against Michelle Williams, who's so great in yeah. Manchester by the oh, Sea. And I thought she would thing. take it home until Viola switched categories. Yeah, which was very smart. Is there any other race sewn up? Um, Mahershala is sold up. Viola is Casey sold up. Affleck sewn up? I think there's a chance that Denzel could beat him at the Globes. Um, I'm not predicting it yet, but I think that this could be one of those cases where we're all just um, wrong about, you know. Because he's been winning game. everything, Casey. Yes. But we've seen cases of that happen all the time. And then at the last minute, Denzel pops up for training day and he'd been not nominated anywhere else or something to shut out. We have to be careful with that. I'm not sure I believe it yet. Denzel could. He's between win, the but, two of them, for sure. Yeah, I think so. And I think, I think that Jeff Bridges is the one who could be competition for Mahershal Ali, too. Yes. I think he's the one right behind him. And Michelle Williams is right behind Viola Davis. Yes. Best Actress. Pete Hammonds said something interesting the other day that I agree with. Uh, but Pete and I have a different view of this race than you do. Pete and I think it is only Emma and Natalie that she can... She hasn't won anything, Emma. Oh. So far, I know, I know, and she's way ahead. Why, of the Why are you so convinced of this? Well, I think the, I think the the rationale goes this way: if uh, if you buy that La La Land's going to win Best Picture, and the, which the, I that, don't, I know you don't, but the vast majority of the experts at Gold Derby do, then Best Picture usually takes <laughs> an acting award. Um, no, no, I mean this is basically what the thing is. Michael Keaton didn't prevail, of course, and Emma Stone lost for for Birdman, but generally a Best Picture wins an acting award, so it would be logical that she would be the acting award that it would win. I think I would agree with that. She, I would agree that she has a better shot than, than Ryan Gosling does, but right. they will both get nominated for sure. You know, but she's the throbbing heart of the movie that um, is so beloved right now. Why would, if La La Land wins best picture, let's assume it does. Why doesn't she go along for the ride or, can, or well, let's, let's just say, well, let's play it out. All right. Golden Globes, La La Land is going to do really, really well. Yeah. Okay. So, because it's in the comedy musical category. So, it's going to win all of those things. And then it moves on, and, you know, it's going to be on the PGA list, and it's going to, you know, we'll see how it does with the different crafts and guilds. But in the end, it's going to get lots of nominations, probably, on January 24th, more than any other movie, I would suggest. So, it's going to have uh, a lot of momentum as the front runner with the most nominations. What movie could catch it and beat it is the question. And the one that's going to have the most momentum, the most mainstream appeal to the widest swath of Academy voters, and the one that sends the right message in the year after Donald Trump wins the election is Fences. And they love to give Oscars to actors to turn director, of course. In this case, I agree with you. Fences could win Best Picture, Director, and Actor, and Supporting Actors. It could happen. And Adapted Screenplay. Right. So, this is my theory. Even though I've been saying that Manchester was the one that might win. And but Manchester's more likely to win at the Globes, and then if that happens, it could get momentum and go that way, right? Right. What about, here's, here's going back to what Pete and I thought about SAG. If Emma wins SAG, we've learned nothing because she's playing an actress going out on auditions. You could kind of excuse her winning there. And there's no La La Land for ensemble, so they may want to put that La La vote somewhere. So let's take the ensemble look. Hidden Figures isn't going to translate. Right, of course. I don't think. Right. Uh, fences will. Yes. Right. No, no, I'm, I'm totally with you there. I, th I think that is a real, real possibility. Manchester will, obviously. Manchester and Moonlight. Those were the ones yes. for SAG. Yes. If Natalie wins SAG, it's over. She will probably, in other words, the, so the, the, the scenario that Pete brings up, and I agree with this, if Emma wins SAG, Natalie could, or someone else could still win the Oscar. But if Natalie wins SAG, 
because they're both going to win the globe. Natalie and Emma will win those globe. That's, actors. that's possible. Yeah, and then so and then if it comes down to SAG, we may not know from the winner from there. What do you think of that? I'm theory? saying we don't know the winner. That this is a close race. That there is no front runner in the Best Actress race, and that we're we have to assume that the voters in in the uh, Academy are a little higher brow, a little tonier, a little more older white people, you know, West Siders, you know, kind of thing. It's not, it's not as mainstream as SAG. It's a different group. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Look, I don't SAG, think, SAG and, they're, and the Globes SAG. mean nothing. I know, and Zero. SAG's starting to mean nothing, and quite frankly, the last three years or so, SAG, it used to be SAG would line up 18 out of 19, or 19 out of 20. Oh, there have been a lot of discrepancies lately. Yeah, lately it's Sarah just, Silverman. <laughs> yes. Exactly. You know, what the right. heck is on there? Nocturnal animal, not nocturnal animals, night crawling. That guy, Aaron, Aaron Taylor Johnson, whatever. You know, these things don't necessarily translate. Right, right. So what movies do you really love this year that you just say you're rooting for, you can't help yourself? I love Tony Erdmann, <laughs> which is a foreign film contender from Germany that's almost three hours long. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and it's a father-daughter story, and it's, it's just totally off the wall, unpredictable. You cannot imagine this movie. It's, 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 it's totally original. And it's so much fun. It makes you laugh out loud. Wow. And it makes you cry, too. Wow. So, I, and there's a scene where the leading actress ends up going totally nude in a, in, a, in, a whole, in a whole sequence that's so funny that you roll on the floor laughing. So, so I, I, think, I think Tony Erdman is, is a wonderful movie. The one I wrote about today is A Man Called Uva, which is the uh, other contender for the best foreign Oscar, which is from Sweden. And it's already done 3.3 million at the off, uh, box office. The biggest grossing foreign film of the year. What about the, uh, the Oscar pony, front runner ponies, like the La La's, the Hacksaw's, the Jackie's, the, um, it, it, any of those? My, my number one is La La, two is Jackie. And I, while I care and like these other movies, I'm emotionally invested in those two. Do you do you go to that extent for any of the chief contenders? All right. So last year, there there the one year I went wild for Life of Pi. Oh yes, but and it I ended, ended up being awesome right about that. Ended up to be right. I was, and I also at a certain point in time made a big fuss about Mad Max Fury Road, and I turned out to be pretty right about that too. Yep. Right, ten, 10 Oscar nominations and many wins. So I. Don't think that that's going to happen with my equivalent movie this year. My equivalent movie this year, my number one movie on my top ten list, is John Favreau's The Jungle Book. Uh, for my money, I saw that. That's right. For uh, my money, that is the best made movie of the year. The most extraordinary achievement from on every aesthetic, creative, and technological level. Oh, okay. That's this year's Avatar. Mm. or Life of Pi or Mad Max. But I believe it will end up winning the Best Visual Effects Award, and that'll be, maybe maybe it'll get a, a score or something like that. Oh, oh J John Debney, I mentioned him earlier. He's the, 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 the score for The Jungle Book. I think Hacksaw Ridge is, is, a, is a Gregson Williams guy. Oh, oh There are okay. two of them. One is, a, one is a brother of the other. Any final thoughts, Anne? Uh, what about this year? We, here's my disappointment of the year, and that is that it looks like one of those years, if, we're, if, if the La La contingent is right at Gold Derby, that it's going to be one of those years, like The Artist or American Beauty or 12 Years a Slave, where the front runner just emerged and stayed there, and now we have solid front runners in at least two of the other races and the supporting races. I love the fact that in lead actress, if it comes down to Emma versus Natalie, you've got two of the sexiest superstars in Hollywood. That gives us something to care about and write about. Um, what's your overall takeaway on the whole scene this year? I think there's a lot of um, movies that some people like and not everybody likes, and that you have a lot of uh, diversity, and I wonder if there won't be only eight uh, movies nominated again for best picture uh i think i think that we're gonna i think that it's a wide open field still even though we have those three films clustered at the top of the race mm -hmm. 
I agree. There's there's lots of room for surprises. Go, Jackie. <laughs> Thanks, Ann. Let, we'll reconvene later on. Happy holidays to you. You too. Enjoy your fire. Show everybody your fire. Yes, I'm up in Pennsylvania at my at my cabin in the woods. The fire is Aww, down. Look at that. <laughs> All right. Life of an Oscarologist. Have a good holiday, Tom. Bye.